What up, nerds, and welcome to another pleasant episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode 481, recorded Sunday, June 16th, 2024. Tonight, we're talking about the winner of the June poll, which is the Mothman Prophecies from 2002. Before we get into it, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got your boy, Ran DZ. What's up, man? Oh, you're a monster! What the hell is wrong with you? What's going on, buddy? Good to talk to you. Ready to talk cryptids today? Mm, you know I am. I'm always ready to talk cryptids with my boy, who's a bit of a cryptid nut. I'm a bit of a cryptid nut. I have a little <laughs> bit of a cryptid nut. <laughs> the layers that we could I'll let back. you decipher what the hell that <laughs> means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether to shit or go blind. <laughs> Last but not least, calling in from Seoul, South Korea, we got your boy Soju. What's up, man? Oh, what up? It's your boy, Indrid Soju. I'm going to make a little <laughs> prediction here. I predict Bob bought too many blues last month and probably will buy too many blues next month. Oh, oh my god I'd millions my blowing die. your mind millions, yeah. <laughs> millions of my dollars will die at the hands ah, of vinegar dude. syndrome if i had millions of dollars to die that'd be rad what if i had Million millions of dollars dollar? to die yeah that's you see you, you missed the, the thing there. the joke you, you just evolved. skipped right over a thing. you gotta you gotta be quicker than that <laughs> come on sorry come on. fucking idiot Randy, this is a, uh, the June poll was was yours. It was your takeover month. How do you feel about the mine. Mothman prophecies winning? You excited? You know, I, yeah, I was excited to watch it again to some degree, but I will say I, I was a little sad to see some of the other opportunities go go sideways. But you know, I'm happy with the outcome. I wouldn't have put it on there if I didn't uh, if I wouldn't want wanted to see it. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Ain't that just the way? It's cool. just the way. Well, before we get into it, let's tackle a little bit of housekeeping real quick. Speaking of polls, our July poll is currently posted over on our Patreon mm. website. If you guys support us at the $5 level or above, you get the chance to vote on a movie we're talking about this July. Uh, it's my takeover month. The theme for July is getting weird with it. <laughs> and the movies oh, you're boy. voting between are The Greasy Strangler, Nightmare Beach, and The Ice Cream Mang. Bob, I hear you're a bit of a weirdo nut. Uh, how are those numbers <laughs> looking? <laughs> you heard correctly, my friend. I like my stranglers extra greasy. Um, I think I misspoke last week, actually. I'm pretty sure that I got my numbers mixed up, so I'm going to uh -oh. clarify it. They, uh -oh. they did change slightly, but so the ice cream man is in first place, and okay. that was also in first place last week. 44% uh, of the vote. Goes to the Ice Cream Man. Second place, Nightmare Beach with 30% of the vote. And finally, the Greasy Strangler with 26%. I think that's All what's right. been consistently said. I think I said Nightmare I Beach last time. Oh, you but said it, Nightmare Beach. Okay, gotcha. I think so, gotcha. yeah. Okay. But uh, still, that's like not, like there's not a runaway. They're still close, yeah. yeah they're still close. Yeah. yeah. So good. People well, we're all... aren't, aren't, aren't sure which terror to go with. Yeah. Which... <laughs> They sure Which, are uncertain about what they want to subject now. themselves <laughs> to. Yeah. Open up a can of with this. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, they're all like serial killer movies. They're all very, very weird serial killers. Like super weird. Yeah. So yep. get your votes yep. in. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we're talking about this July. In other Patreon news, we're dropping mini casts every other Friday. We got a brand new mini cast that came out on the seventh. I was talking about the first Omen, and uh, next up this Friday, the twenty-first, we're gonna be dropping another mini cast on a new release in a violent nature. Ooh, nice! Right. That's a that's another new one, right? That's a yes. Fresh 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's it's being sold as an ambient slasher. An am- um, <laughs> it's a Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> ambient. Yeah, I, I don't. don't know, uh, man. I don't think people yeah. know what to expect out of this movie, which is crazy because the trailer pretty much tells you the whole deal. Yeah, yeah. If you're into the trailer, <laughs> you'll be into the movie. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, I I uh, I dug it for what it was. But if you want to hear all of my thoughts on it, uh, that's dropping this Friday over I on do. Patreon. I do. Tune in, find out. Also, if you guys uh, do want to listen to the mini casts that we're putting out, you don't have to listen to them just on Patreon. Uh, whenever you sign up, you get emailed an RSS feed that you can drop in your podcatcher of choice and listen to all 132 mini casts we've released yeah. anywhere you would like. My lord. Damn. Bob, Damn. I am. Last week you recommended I check out your mini cast on the first Omen. I did. And I'm glad I didn't watch it. Well, no, that's not true. And, I might still watch it. I'm, I might still watch it, but. <laughs> and I want my money back. Is Good what I was cover. Thinking. <laughs> I was not upset about it, but it's yeah. like, you know, we don't need it. We yeah. don't need it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I've heard like, like the gamut of opinions on that seem like it's. It, it's skewing very, very positive from what I've seen. Well, Bob's a heathen, non-Christian, so I that's mean, true. Oh, well, yeah, we know he's, that. He's, For uh, shame. he's not really invested in the church, so yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's his <laughs> lack of investment in Christianity. But you guys, on the other Roman... hand, <laughs> so me and Randy are really going to get <laughs> get something out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is a movie for us and my people. Uh, <laughs> Juice over here said ten percent. Fuck that! I'm giving you seventy <laughs> percent. That's good You've enough got for a God. Big storm coming. Damn. Damn. Uh, in other Patreon news, we got a brand new Patreon supporter. We got to give mad shouts outs to. Oh yeah. A big gigantic thank you to Bonnie for signing up on Patreon and showing us love. Every dollar you guys contribute goes right back into the show. It truly does help keep Straight Chilling rolling. And as is tradition around these here parts, we owe Bonnie the Straight Chilling salute. This one goes out to you. Thanks, Bonnie. We Thanks. appreciate you. Thanks for that slap in the ass. Hashtag nice appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate uh, the last bit of Patreon nu- uh, news that I have here uh, is, and it's a big one, y'all. Oh, this is your final me. reminder. Oh, man. <laughs> We're reopening the You Pick the Flick tier for the last time this year. This Sunday, oh, the 23rd. God. June All 23rd. of them? All of them. So All of them. If you haven't listened to the past couple episodes, uh, we are we're taking the final ten. You pick the flick spots, uh, which would typically be dropped in two separate uh, qu- quarterly uh, openings, but we're slamming mm-hmm. them together. We're opening it one more time. <laughs> ten spots going to ten different people, and that's it for wow. the year. Yeah, that's illegal, right? Yeah, it's a felony. It's a felony. Yes, it is. Wow. Now, this is also something to consider is it's possible. So this is the last time you can make us watch a movie for 2024, for sure, because we're not Mm -hmm. splitting into the two separate um, quarters. But it's possible to say this might be the last opportunity you ever have to make straight chillin' watch a movie because if we announce we're retiring on episode 500 if that's the big Justin's announcement facing some pretty <laughs> serious charges in korea right now so we're kind of making new adjustments for the i mean future. you know uh, if we if we decide to just close shop 500s the top of the pyramid for us you know then this, this might be your last chance oh, ever stand this... by for our new host chicken and whiskey stains chicken or chicken no chicken Ooh, chicken and chicken beer and stains. Wh- there it is that's what I was going for. <laughs> Fried chicken and beer stains coming up soon. This, uh, stains. <laughs> the fear mongering was definitely learned in the uh, in the church for sure. You guys <laughs> really oh. picked up some stuff. I'm just saying you never know what's gonna happen. 500's coming up. This could be your last shot. I'm just you know. I mean, trying to add, confuse me with your liberal biblicism. Just adding some more weight to the situation. You might you know? just die and go to hell tomorrow. So it's you know, possible. You better <laughs> repent. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah, this, yeah. so this is the only way that you guys can outright pick a movie for us to review. Uh, again, we're opening up this tier on our Patreon website at an undisclosed time of day this Sunday, June 23rd. Ten spots going to ten different people. Check it out. 
Yeah. Uh, that's all we got for Patreon. Oh. No. Sorry. No. You, somebody blanked you out on me there. Bob oh, froze. sorry. Uh, do you guys have anything you need to plug? Um, um, no. <laughs> no, I think I'm good. This house might just be clean, unless, Bob. I got one more thing real quick. Else. Joe Bob watch party this Friday, the 21st, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, join us for the watch party if you'd like to. We're, we're sending out links for the Zoom watch party just before showtime, 9 Eastern. You just got to ha have, have the last word, don't you, Bob? You just got to have that us. last word. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to include you. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, it's, has it's... to squeeze that last one in there. I guess it's clean. It's clean. Wait, one more All thing. Right. <laughs> let's one more fucking thing. It's uh, let's let's get, <laughs> let's get into the main event. We're talking about the Mothman prophecies, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? Babo, Babo, where's your box? Oh, yeah. Did you not have this box? Oh, you did have the box. Okay. Uh, well, you didn't out out put it here. up, did you? I thought you put up like a little figurine. <laughs> I wanted or to something. keep did. you in suspense. Now Bob's showing off the figurines. Mm -hmm. Hey, fuck you. You need an extra set of hands to throw up all your collectibles on the, on the screenshot. <laughs> and here's the Mothman tiki mug. <laughs> that is the reason you would want extra hands. <laughs> Uh, I gotta I, show off the merch. Well, Man, I need a Mothman tiki mug now. I know. I'm surprised I you am. don't have one. I'm kind of disappointed. Not gonna lie. <laughs> what am I drinking out of this normal glass? What am I a loser? Are you kidding? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. One of the other 69 tiki mugs you have. I mean, <laughs> that's just <laughs> unacceptable. <laughs> Rookie numbers. Uh, Mothman prophecies. Yeah, this is uh this is on Blu-ray. It's on DVD. You can rent it. You can stream it. It's everywhere. It's really easy to find. From 2002, rated PG-13 with a runtime of an hour and 59 minutes. This was directed by Mark Pellington, uh, written by Richard Hatem, based on a novel written by John A. Keel. Stars Richard Gere, Laura Linney, David Elgenberg, uh, Deborah Messing. <laughs> Uh, who weird, else is... weird pause there. Who else? Will Patton, your boy, Will Patton, killing Will. It in this movie. A bunch of other folks. Plot synopsis brought to you by the back of the box is as follows If you see it, are you safe? If you don't, are you next? Driven by mysterious circumstances surrounding his wife's death, John Klein uncovers chilling secrets behind the Mothman, a timeless, nameless horror whose appearance spells doom for all those who see it. Like nothing I'd ever smelled before in my life. In my life. He's gonna he's going to the papers. The Mothman's talking to reporters in this movie. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, the Mothman does some funny Actually, things. Actually, he does. That we'll he does. He's get into yeah. Yeah. on the he didn't say off the record. That shit's publishable. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't yeah. say you were recording. <laughs> uh gentlemen. This is a two party consent state. <laughs> <laughs> Mothman knows his legal shit. Uh, okay. Have you guys seen this before? And would you recommend folks check it out? Randy, kick us off. Yes, I've seen this movie a uh, grand total of one singular time in the theaters with my mommy. It was uh, just a, I don't know why. We just kind of, I think my mom just wanted to see a Richard Kier movie and that's what was out. And I went with, yeah. Um, would I recommend? Yeah, I think think so um i think it definitely is more has more claim to being a christmas horror movie than a lot of the movies that you guys ascribe as sneaky christmas i think it's got a uh it's fur further down that spectrum a lot so, yeah, of maybe a good uh winter time viewing if we're going with our calendar um yeah i don't yeah it's it's definitely one of the better uh cryptid horror movies that i have personally seen i'll, I'll give it that but i have some right, reservations right on randy <laughs> Uh, where were those reservations? We were putting your poll together, you know. You I hadn't seen the, the movie since I was a child, so I didn't remember <laughs> those reservations. Bob. Randy, uh, okay. Juice, what about you? Yeah, I had seen this before. Like Randy, I'd been uh, quite a while since I've seen it. I, I I don't know the last time I watched it, but it's been a while, and I've seen it at least once, maybe more than once. And I gotta say, this lived in my mind as a pretty positive movie. Um, but I gotta say, on this watch, I it was 
kind of disappointed or underwhelmed maybe this is probably the most underwhelming watch of this film i've seen and um i think it's like dated in some kind of negative aspects um but i mean it's uh, yeah it's it's solid too for christmas i guess um it's not why it's not one of the top 20 i'm probably going to be reaching for for christmas or but i mean well, yeah, you know billions, it's an alternate on your yeah. scale it's like i mean prometheus supply. definitely is going to be the top of that list i but... mean Christmas yeah, Day, absolutely. come on, <laughs> my God! But, Put that um, on next to Christmas Story, picture in picture style. I uh, maybe loose recommend, loose recommend. <laughs> uh, Bob, how about you? Would you recommend people check this out? I would recommend it. Yeah, hmm. I I've seen this in the theater, and I think maybe once before or once since that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I like this movie. It may maybe there's like some sort of nostalgia at play here, but this movie like kind of creeps me out. It's effective in a lot of ways um it uh, gets under my skin so yeah i dig it i would recommend yeah. it just kind of generally cool so all right yeah so bob medium recommend medium. i guess across That's the board okay. yeah medium <laughs> yeah mm. uh yeah uh, randy you had a question no i said well all right oh uh, okay well <laughs> sounds like a me spoil. medium to loose recommend boys it's mm -hmm. a loose <laughs> medium to loose recommend. bob's preference <laughs> good lord <laughs> my god fucking a god damn it's bargain bin friendship man i just gotta return <laughs> yeah. it fuck uh yeah we're gonna be spoiling the shit out of the mothman prophecies and here comes your warning Warning. Like a relaxed fit, gentlemen. You know, <laughs> shit. It's in style built, these days. Built for comfort. Yeah. Okay. He, but this man was raised in Jinkos. We can't forget. <laughs> time to time to dust those bad boys off, boy. I had back. like like toddler Jinkos. My parents bought for me. <laughs> They're just men's <laughs> jeans. Raised in jinkos. <laughs> My mom embroidered like little flames on the ass. They're, they're yeah, just, they're, they're they're adult just your men's dad's cut off jean but shorts. Jeans. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> your dad's all cut off with their jinko <laughs> as a two year old. <laughs> oh man, that would have made that would have that would have been perfect. Yeah. Happy fuck. Father's Day, boys. Hey, yeah, hey, no hey. <laughs> Heard somebody's uh, trying. Um, Bob, you got that plops and that's <laughs> Yeah. Got... Where the fuck did that come? <laughs> All right. You're just, oh, just shooting man. from the hip tonight. Jesus just Christ. Telling lies all day. All day here in Straight Jones. <laughs> fuck me. Going for yeah, triplets, I, got... I hear. Uh, I just said someone. Someone out there is trying. <laughs> someone in the world is what I meant. I heard that someone on this planet is trying to have a child. I don't even know. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know if I can back that up, but uh... I feel confident in that claim. Bob, hit us with that plot synopsis. All right. Plot synopsis. Here we go. All right. The movie opens up by saying it's based on true events that happened in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Uh, we then meet our boy John Klein. He's a Washington Times reporter. He and his wife Mary Klein go view a house. They decide to buy it after a very vigorous makeout session in the closet. Mary speeds home because they're like really horny and want to bone it out. Um, they uh, on the way home, they see this like bizarre red eyed moth creature thing, and it causes her to crash the car and bang her head. The hospital does a cat scan and they find uh, brain cancer. Mary says she saw something weird and makes a bunch of spooky drawings of what she saw. She eventually loses her battle with cancer. And then we jump forward in time two years. A restless John decides to drive down to Richmond at one o'clock in the morning for a story he's covering. His car breaks down and he knocks on a stranger's door asking to use the phone. A man named Gordon answers the door, pulls a shotgun on him. Gordon calls the cops and Sheriff Connie Mills shows up and defuses the situation. Gordon claims John's knocked on his door three nights in a row and is stalking him. John has no idea what Gordon's talking about. Connie takes John over to a hotel, and that's when he realizes he's in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which is nowhere near Richmond, and he has no idea how he got there. Furthermore, he somehow traveled 400 miles in an hour and a half. 
The next morning, the mechanic says there's also nothing wrong with his car. That night, he stakes out Gordon's home, but Connie finds him. She says several honest people in town have been seeing bizarre things. She shows him a drawing one of the residents made, and it matches that of his wife's drawings. Uh, John investigates by talking to the woman that made the picture, as well as talking to some uh, folks working in a fire station that received strange calls, and also talking to a young couple who saw a moth-like creature that caused their eyes to swell up and uh, never fully heal. John starts getting weird calls himself. Gordon says a howling voice came out of his bathroom sink and said, quote, 99 would die, Denver 9. The next day, John sees a news story about Flight 9 to Denver crashing and all 99 on board died. Gordon then, sees, Gordon then sees a spooky man on his way home claiming his name is Indrid Cole and he says 300 will die equator. The next day, there's an earthquake in Ecuador, kills 300 folks. Connie tells John about a weird dream she had where she's drowning in cold water surrounded by presents and a voice says, wake up, number 37, and then she wakes up from her dream. John gets a spooky call from Indrid Cold, who seems to be able to read his mind and say several things that he shouldn't be able to know. John records the conversation, has it analyzed. The engineer says the voice is not human. John tracks down a writer specializing in the supernatural who has experienced similar things. He says these creatures have always been around, and they have been known by different things. There's a, they're just a natural part of the world, but we can't see them, kind of like electricity. He tells John to never return to Point Pleasant or he'll die. John returns to Point Pleasant. He goes to see Gordon after a weird phone call, <laughs> finds Gordon frozen to death in the woods. He's been dead for hours, and there's no possible way he could have made the call. Connie tells John a redheaded woman came to the station asking about him. He shows her a picture of his late wife, and it was indeed her. John's boss calls him and tells him to go meet the governor at the chemical plant in Richmond to do a story. Uh, he gets another spooky call that says tragedy will happen on the Ohio River, which the chemical plant is on. He tells the governor not to go and to shut the plant down. Uh, the governor goes and does the tour, and absolutely nothing happens. John ends up waiting in a hotel bar very far away from the plant. He receives a written message this time saying his wife, Mary, will call his Georgetown residence on Friday at noon. He goes home and waits for the call. Connie rings him first and invites him to spend Christmas with her family because nobody should be alone on Christmas. The phone rings a second time, and he rips the phone out of the wall, expecting it to be Mary. The phone then somehow rings yet again, and he leaves to go back to Point Pleasant and spend Christmas with Connie and her family. He gets back and tries to cross the Silver Bridge, but there's crazy traffic. He has a feeling that the tragedy on the Ohio River is about to happen. He runs under the bridge, warning folks Connie is stuck on the bridge herself, and as it starts to slowly collapse, she runs around warning folks to evacuate the bridge as well. She gets back in her police car and radios for backup, and then the bridge falls, and her vehicle also falls into the river. John dives in and pulls her out of the super cold water, saving her life. 36 people died, but lucky number 37 did indeed wake up, as was prophesied. The movie ends by saying Mothman has been seen all over the world again, but never in Point Pleasant. Roll them credits. All right. A lot of shit damn. happens in this movie. A lot yeah. of shit happens in this movie. It does. <laughs> like, damn. A lot of back and forths. It is based on Man. a novel, though, so I guess they had a ton of stuff to work with, plus, like, the, quote, like, real-life sightings that happen in Point Pleasant. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is like I think one of the one of the ways this movie gets under my skin is to know that there was like over a hundred like you know legitimate quote legitimate sightings of the Mothman in Point Pleasant mm. in about a thirteen month span in the mid fifties. So like there was something going on, or maybe these folks were just bored, you know, and just everybody wanted <laughs> no. to make shit up. No, well, come on, that's that seems like I don't know, it's kind of spooky. I you know? honestly often wonder. I, it's hard to say for the 50s and the mentality thinking now as a jaded piece of shit um <laughs> i often think of like you know this this middle of the t like small town middle of nowhere type of place where people might be relying on like small businesses or like um you know tourism in some fashion i don't you know i don't exactly know where this is located like in the same way you have the people from jaws like all having this town meeting about like we gotta have a thing even though there's a shark out there it it would not really surprise me to know that this like small town got together and was like we gotta make some creature that <laughs> will sell yeah, our town drum up you know? some business yeah, yeah. something yeah. honestly i mean it's not too far-fetched to think that i know it's like well, i mean it's the atomic age at that time. You know what I yeah. mean? Like people are fascinated with the idea of extraterrestrials and things. And like having, 
I watched a couple of videos about like the supposed like very short videos about the surveying the real life events or whatever. And they're, they're very, very different than what we see on screen, which is to be expected to some degree, but like very, very different. What they do include that is legitimate is like obviously the 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 bridge collapse. That's a real thing that happened, um, as well as some of the stories that some of the characters are telling are somewhat ripped from the from the account, firsthand accounts. Um, but they're like the way that they're used, the way that they're told they're, they're you know, they're in- interspersed into a more, much more dramatic Hollywood sort of story. Mm-hmm. So like there's some legitimacy in there that like helps it feel a little realer, even as it like sidesteps reality the entire time. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, like I feel like it, this the first time I saw this, it hit a lot more legitimately because I like because of the, the based on a true story thing hadn't I hadn't been jaded out of that yet. You know what I mean? And this movie is a pretty, pretty bad uh, uh, example of a based on a true events sort of situation. These are fanciful, <laughs> fanciful retellings for sure. And I mean, even the the time period is set in the modern era for starters. Like just mm-hmm. just there on its own. Like there's things that happen in this movie that just wouldn't happen in the fifties, flat, flat out. Um, yeah. Leaving voice messages for one thing, <laughs> uh, you know, shit like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Little basic I, things like that, or I have love... you using the computer to like analyze the voice and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. yeah, like just to legitimize things in the story, sure, because they can't legitimize it any other way. They don't yeah. have recordings of the fucking Mothman <laughs> talking casually <laughs> as Ingrid Cold or whatever. Hello, like. John. <laughs> I, I love that the Mothman spends like half of this movie just making like crank calls, like just Dude, fucking yeah. with people. Like that is so hilarious to me. Well, like this otherworldly being is just funny because yeah. like they go through such lengths to they brought brought in that guy in chicago to like ju- pretty much just to like lay out some groundwork including the idea yeah. that like well well we can't tell what they want it's unknowable what they could want just to justify <laughs> the fact that the mothman's motives are completely baffling and bizarre like does he want uh, Richard Gear there? Does he not want Richard Gear there? Yeah. What is Richard Gear yeah. to to the Mothman? Because <laughs> he lures him back home to Georgetown when the bridge is right. about to collapse. Like yeah. he doesn't want him to. But help, that's but after like, months or whatever, like, like a week or two him of off. stringing him along. Yeah, like why? Him, you... These are the prophecies. Yeah, it's it's uh confusing. But well, and also uh, sometimes so... it's a monster, and so when the wife yeah. sees it, it's a monster, and then mm-hmm. like when the kids who are banging out in the car see it, it's a monster, but it also shows up at people's houses, and yeah. it also just calls you. It impersonates well, it gets, people. Yeah, and it yeah. impersonates people. So, but then also has its own voice. Like so it's, and sometimes to... it's in a sink, but it can call yeah. your a phone. Sink sometimes monster. it's in a sink. Yes, it's like Pennywise. My this sink movie is, is actually <laughs> just Pennywise. He moved to Dairy right after yeah. this. Um, uh, no, I don't know, man. Like, the, like I forgot what I was gonna say about that actually, but yeah, it's a it's a very strange. There's no like properties to cling on to, and yeah, this movie, so, I think that that's like. I can't decide if that's a good, good, good idea from a screenwriting perspective or a bad one when you're dealing with a cryptid that is like, like the evidence does, just doesn't exist. Like you just kind of have to make shit up anyway and make it compelling. So why not do whatever you want on the one hand to make it compelling? But on the other hand, if you're trying to make it believable, it, do, it doesn't do that. Like, I don't know. It's part of me feels yeah. like it's like, do whatever you want. Cause you're making it up whole cloth anyway, except for the yeah. firsthand accounts that you're just sprinkling in. Like, yeah. It doesn't it just, bother me, really. It's it's a little scattershot, but like it does kind of bother me because yeah. it'd be like imagine if just everything that happened to, with any kind of cryptid was just called Bigfoot, you know, and like <laughs> and I know sometimes it does get wild, like Bigfoot has some electrical properties that shuts down <laughs> your car and like I know it gets wild. <laughs> But in a general sense, I, I don't know. I guess it's more fun to imagine a Bigfoot as it is and how it would function and what its motivations would be. And you can see it like go into the wood or in your minds, like you have this image of it, but even I like even calling it Mothman feels Mm -hmm. disingenuous in a way because it feels like you need to give it something, but also too, you're saying it's like, a dude that's going to meet you down by the factory or it's going to look like Richard 
showing up at your door. Like, I mean, like, so I don't, I don't know. It's like an like, energy. I think the the author kind of alluded that it's it's yeah, some sort of just eternal. Yeah, energy is it an energy? It is a de- is it a demon? Is yeah. it an alien? Because in the f- actual like in in the factual Point Pleasant case, people widely speculated as it being alien, not anything else. Yeah, not a, like yeah. an invasion sort of deal. Like it was just this creature from outer space that went around. Uh, creeping people out, and they all had different versions of it because it's not real, and they made they made it up. Uh, um, <laughs> no, they so, didn't. Like, Randy. No, they didn't. Oh, I so also like, had yeah, a Mothman. The town drunk and the school night. marm that saw the same thing. It looked wildly different, but they're Called calling the it the same man. thing anyway. <laughs> he tongued my butt when I was sleeping. <laughs> all right, well, we don't need to know the intricate sexual need history call, of you. Need to call my, my day man in here to take God, <laughs> my nightmare. I have a li- I've, I've got a decent amount of trivia that I'll try and sprinkle through this. But sure. um, t- talking about like the, I guess the this shit that people actually said anyway. Um. Uh, so th- yeah, nineteen sixty six to uh, nineteen sixty seven. Uh, there was a bunch of n- newspaper articles that came out in Point Pleasant. The very first one uh, that was dropped was dated November sixteenth, nineteen sixty six, and the title said, "Quote: Couples see man sized bird." dot 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 creature dot 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 something mm-hmm. so like the of eventually they they landed on the mothman title and from what i was reading i don't know if this is true or not but the the batman tv show in the 60s had uh, a villain that was a moth he wasn't called mothman but he was like uh K- killer moth was what he was called and they people think that sort of influence like finally landing on the mothman title for the creature that that could make a kind of sense. I was wondering about that because they really spend almost no time justifying the name, and not, Richard Gere doesn't, who is a fucking Washington Post star reporter, <laughs> doesn't even have a reaction to it being called that. He's just like, mm-hmm. "Why Mothman?" Like, uh, not even that mm-hmm. question ever crosses his lips. We see a little blurb, like in a in a montage, where it's like somebody described it as moth-like, and that's just where it comes from, I guess. I don't know. It it like the inconsistency of it is. It is, I think, part of part of trying to sprinkle in that real life lore when the real life lore itself is inconsistent because it's not real. <laughs> so, like, yeah. he's trying to work some things in and make it as dramatic as possible. So, hey, I don't know. I guess I'm a little split on it. It's it's silly or whatever, but so is the original story. The, the mm. fact that they take it deadly serious is 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 an approach that I, I kind of respect, even though it doesn't work yeah. all the way because of the very nature of the lore that they're building out from. Did they just this... they, I felt like at that time they couldn't really do grays and they couldn't really do no. like that sort of alien because this was uh, like not that long after like fucking Mars attacks and shit was coming out where it was not seriously taken seriously in the least. So like the fact that they kind of like sidestep that, but st- in order to take it seriously and hope that audiences would follow is is a decision that I think they made. That's my suspicion. I was mostly on board with with that. Did this movie creep you guys out at all, or was it just me? Nah, dude, just you. Not this time. Really? Wow. First time I thought it was like, yeah. The first time it got you, but you were were much younger. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't say that it like blew my mind or whatever, but I was, I remember like Justin, you you said you felt positively towards it. So did I. I was like, wow, that was pretty Mm. good. That was pretty good. And you know, it's a PG-13 movie, so I think for, it's pretty great for a sort of like, slow burny thrillery sort of thing for that age group it's like Mm -hmm. if you're not quite ready for seven or something like that yeah you might be able to ease dip your toes into the the water of like yeah (laughs) okay there was like a handful (laughs) of times when i was watching this where like i like my skin started crawling i got like goosebumps like it it legitimately kind of got to me yeah i may and maybe that's like triggering some sort of like latent memory that you know I first saw it when I was younger and it like spooked me and like it's still I I don't know man but like when Will Grow Patton up, Grow up. never Will Patton is doing a I great job in this movie he's he's crushing I want to see him in more shit <laughs> yeah he he's when when he's describing the sync communication that he has for some reason like the way he delivers that like kind of freaks me out honestly like it yeah, got yeah. to me. He was selling um, it well, yeah, he was. 
the, the performances it, in this movie sell a lot of the shit that the story can't. They kind of have to because yeah, exactly. They had to even, get a Richard Gere in here. <laughs> even when their story, like, I mean, even just us talking about that, Will Patton delivering what happened in the sink. That's kind of part of the problem too. Is we don't experience the sink. We don't go to the factory. Like most of the time, we're with the reporter who's hearing about these things, goes to these places and nothing happens. <laughs> like well, that's the problem. The um, when he does have a conversation with the injured cold character on the phone and he's like reading his mind and stuff. Yeah. That was another point in the movie where I, I was kind of freaked out by it. That like really worked yeah. for me. I could no. understand somebody feeling that way, but the way that the vo the voice did not sound creepy to me on its own. Like, like really? just purely and simply like the, the, the sound of the thing's voice just sounded like any garden variety voice modulation yeah. of some kind to me. And I was just like, and it, the, the, the idea that this ethereal energy being is calling on the phone to be like, you've got a watch in your shoe. It's under your bed. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I don't need yeah, that. Yeah. Doing like tricks. Yeah. <laughs> and like also the jerky too, boys are calling from yeah. fucking space. Uh, I, I love it. I just even taking this voice. Okay. Imagine that you've spent your whole life, you are an expert in sound design or whatever, and somebody brings you a recording that's somebody talking, and you yourself say, these are not human vocal cords. Wouldn't you lose your mind? <laughs> like, <laughs> wouldn't was you? pretty chill. Yeah, yeah well, I, I don't know it's... what it is, but it's not human. It's like, well, that's a pretty... It's a pretty big what discovery. I mean, that's, I mean, that like, if that's your expertise, yeah, like you it, it would be post. like if Randy was like, you know, a designer and he's like, I know that something's faked and you got a straight up picture that was like a fucking alien. And you're like, I know 100% that this is real. You wouldn't be like, well, I know that this is not edited. I mean, you would, that's like, it's just, Randy, what would you do? Ev Randy? I mean, everything in here is just that played. situation will ever happen. I mean, you have okay. You have a demon's voice on recorded. And... No, no, no. I'm talking about the graphic design version of that. No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm yeah. not, I'm not interrogating you at this yeah, point. Yeah. I'm saying in a hypothetical okay. sense. Gotcha. The this reporter has a demon's voice on the phone, and he has an expert that will say this is not a human voice. I mean, people like this is, <laughs> this is like Justin, big stuff. Here. <laughs> literally, they have that for Bigfoot. We've seen the documentary where they show Whoa. it to us, and it sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, but no human no can possibly human do can that. It can't that be recreated. Sound. Yeah, an expert did say that, and I'm sorry. I mean, I, unimpressed. Someone it's who impossible. said an expert. So, <laughs> if you're if you're a, an editor right. at the Washington fucking Post, and your star reporter has been missing after on the anniversary of his wife's death. Uh, for a few days and calls in and says, I've got audio proof that the Mothman is real. An audio expert <laughs> says that nobody can mimic this. And it's somebody saying like, is there a watch in your shoes? <laughs> like, no. Is your refrigerator no, you running? Laughed out of town. <laughs> I'm just saying you personally, like if you were saying I'm a sound expert. I experienced that. Yeah. If I'm a sound expert and I said, this is As not a, a human vocal cord. If, I don't know how you. I'll tell you this. My first impulse that. is. Oh, sorry, Bob. But I mean, yeah, he put he puts it in his little machine, and you see the waveform, and it's like, yeah, it like it. It's. How, I don't know how you could possibly conclude that it's not a human making that sound. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. Th it's a waveform. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's waveforms made of all kinds of things. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's uh, <laughs> if it's me, if I'm in that situation, my first impulse is this audio engineer is stupid. I don't trust him <laughs> to give an honest. I think he is trying to make yeah. something out of nothing yeah. or is stupid. It's those yeah. are the options I think are Occam's razor. I, I think what I wanted this movie to do a little bit more is to uh, like, I guess it kind of takes some of the strength out of it for me and a little bit in that, like this man's been. So I guess that's what you just said is more intriguing to me is this man spends most of his time of this film in a setting where everyone supports and believes his crazy things, which are just so happen to be attached to his wife's death, which he's still mourning. 
-hmm. So it's more intriguing to me to play off this aspect of like, is this man having a breakdown? You know, is he, mm -hmm. is he struggling to deal with this? Um, but they don't interesting to explore. They yeah. don't at all. If, Everybody if believes Connie... and completely like supports them for the most part. Now, yeah, you know, I know his boss is calling and stuff like that, but, and oh, yeah. you know, he talks, he tries to stop the governor. So there's like a little bit of conflict there, but I, things are just too smooth here. I don't know. There's just I not agree. a lot happening. I think I know why, too. It's because the majority of the feedback he gets is from Connie, who is a built-in love interest before she's anything else. Like, yeah. And her take on it, because she has to be like the representative of good, honest, true, hard-working, real Americans in, in uh, flyover country, it has to be like... And has to be like, well, these this is I trust I trust Will Patton. I trust him and his wife. They're good people. They wouldn't lie about this. Well, have you considered maybe they are crazy <laughs> or maybe there's a mass hallucination or a big gas leak in the town? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Connie. There's a chemical maybe plant think... nearby. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe there's something yeah. in the water, water. water that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> there, and she's like... not even willing to consider that possibility when he brings it up, even though that is a leap of logic. It's <laughs> yeah. like uh, there's no way the chemical plant would ever spill into the ocean. We know. <laughs> I like that they play it straight and take the Mothman as like fact in this. It's I think it's a fun exploration. I mean, you could make it more a cerebral type thing, it, and that would also be interesting. I think, but I'm I'm definitely down for like, hey, no, the Mothman's just fucking real, and people are trying to figure out like what he's about. Yeah, I'm very down. I don't for know. That. I I, I, I can like I want it feel that way, but the movie doesn't justify that enough for me yeah. to really feel it that way. You know, mm -hmm. I, I if the, if the it, I, it needs to be have its tensile strength tested by people prodding at its silliness, its inherent yeah. silliness. Randy. Like not, that's like like in The Witch. They take The Witch very deadly seriously. They mm. believe in witches, though, because they are from the 16th century and they are very God-fearing. There's a logic to the reason they would be fearful of that and why yeah. they take it seriously, and therefore we do. There's not a reason for anybody to take this seriously except for the people that have experienced it. Connie's not one of them, until like at least not right away. And the only like if they had just focused on Will Patton and like Richard Year kind of getting sucked into Will Patton's like circle and then he dies out in the woods and they're like, look, this guy's clearly insane. You you need to back off this. This has to do with your wife. It ha doesn't have to do with a moth man. And then he's like, but what about all these incidents? And then it, it's like Valley of Doubt. And then, oh, shit, I've realized what's going to happen. And I go back or some shit like that. I mean, that's like a very bare bones version of this. But I, I just think that there's it at least self justifies at that point. And that's the thing that I think this is missing a little bit is like he's just going to go. It I don't know. It doesn't. Well, also it doesn't to hold together for to me. be fair, there's nothing really to be afraid of. Honestly, the one person who has experienced this before is living, is living in D.C. or wherever that guy is, and yeah. the only person who's a victim of this like just goes and sits out in the woods i mean for the most part the mothman's like kind of trying to help or or just kind of playing some tricks well, on you know. there's no there's yeah. no real th there's nothing that's what i'm saying like maybe if we experience the sink scene it would be more creepy but all i have is like this dude calling on the phone and yeah saying like your watch is in your shoe it's like that's not scary I, I mean, I think, he's not like trying to trick. intimidate him. He's not That's trying. A, he's yeah. not saying like, I'm going to well, fuck is he? you I up. Know. I don't know. Like, this is the thing is it's unclear, like what the thing wants. And I think that's supposed to be unsettling enough on its own. But it kind of isn't when it's just doing parlor tricks. If he was the if if we like you said, to your point, if they did that sink scene, but it was Richard Gere's wife speaking through the sink, then you have like a Pennywise situation for real. And it's yeah. like. That's mm -hmm. scary. It's like my dead wife is speaking to me through the fucking piping. That yeah. might actually ins like motivate him to go more because I think he is supposed like I think the whole thing hinges on his grief over his dead wife. I think that's clearly what what his uh, like central core uh, thing is is his his uh, grief basically about his dead wife. But like they don't focus on that like in the same way as they do. Like it just doesn't it doesn't play well. I don't feel that. I feel like he is just yeah. pursuing a story, but he's doing it with the lack of rigor that you would expect from somebody not being an ace attorney, ace, ace, uh, sorry, ace journalist Reporter. at the fucking Washington Post. I don't know. 
I, I have some it, problems with that stuff. If I think too hard about it, it just really falls apart for me. But yeah. the performances and the things like that, that keeps me going. Like I think that like the editing in this is very dated in a lot of ways, but I kind of like it. I love the way like the the like lights shimmer into the next scene and things like that. It felt older I than I I it felt older than 2002 to me. I if I had just watched this movie and had no clue what the date was, I'd probably place it around like 1995, honestly, with the editing mm. styles and I stuff like that, that kind yeah. of feels I don't know, older than Maybe than it's that. like a, maybe it's a nostalgia thing, but I really kind of liked some of that stuff. Like it felt like It is nostalgia. Like that's that's the kind of stuff that makes too, me yeah. think about like 7 is it's like very moody and very like like the some somewhat seamless transitions the way that yeah. they, they they use the camera and it makes sense for a movie where that's trying to posit that there's an energy demon chasing you it kind of undercuts all of that to have him prank call a guy and do parlor tricks i, I like most of the dated scene. most of the dated stuff in this works for me but s- some of the um blurry images or whatever like Kind of reminded me of like unsolved mysteries or some shit like a yeah. In a way. yeah. Reminded me of like X Files too, it's honestly, like, like yeah. a monster X-Files of the week kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. trying to do that. I think it's trying to capture that audience. Yeah, and it's, Probably, like, yeah. it's playing with the those pieces because that's culturally what was recognized as being associated with this sort of stuff at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's Did just better guys... done than fucking ancient aliens. <laughs> Sorry, Did you guys ahead. notice at the at the very beginning when they're like looking at the house and they're like a, just full on about to fuck in the closet of this house that they are viewing with a realtor like mm-hmm. she uh the, the light comes on and there's a moth by the light that flies around and yeah. then the realtor op- opens the, the uh, closet doors or whatever. Uh-huh. Is the Mothman like watching them about to fuck? Is this like was that the inciting incident where the Mothman's I like that... <laughs> I wondered about that on because... them or something? Because Richard Gere has that line a few minutes later where he's describing the situation with his wife to his friend from work, and he's like, It's like, you know, the universe sees you and you're a happy couple, and he says, Ah, I've been looking for you. Yeah, you got it yeah. too good, or something like that. And it's like that's an impactful scene for him. Like, I think that worked really, really well. But like, I also like, but in the content, broader context of this movie, are we saying that the Mothman is like, is just like this chaotic judgment that's coming down on him for fucking his wife at a realtor's uh, showing? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm teaching him some manners, you know, you can't do that. Well, and that's the you thing. Can't be it's this like, horny and happy. I don't, I mean, <laughs> it's all over the place because then that leads to a car crash where she sees the Mothman. She doesn't die from the car crash. She has a tumor. <laughs> And but then the it's like, a, yeah, it, it can't be taken out. It. Yeah, it doesn't matter that they caught it. And then it's like, oh, did the Mothman cause the tumor? Well, nobody else has a tumor. I don't like it's just. <laughs> yeah, there's just right. too many details that seem like, oh, well, oh, is it's, he like it's the is definition he radiation? Of yeah, is he like causing yeah. to, it's like, oh, no, nobody else has. And then maybe that's the thing, well, too. It burns your eyes, but only yeah, for these yeah. kids. Like, and they the other burns. dude hangs out with him at the factory and is completely yeah. unaltered physically. <laughs> like, yeah, I just, I don't, know. I don't, it's too I can all tell over you this. the place. It's all over the place again because I think all of those things are from different story perspectives, or so, stories that were told made up at yeah, that made time. Up shit. And they're all made up by independently by independent either kooks or people trying to capture the imagination that captured yeah. them and keep this keep this tr- wagon train a rolling you know what i mean so like it's just trying to make the incongruous congruous somehow and it's not really doing that job i'll be honest like it's just not really managing that no it's not yeah so i don't know <laughs> there was so there was like one of the bonus features on this disc that i have is there was a documentary about the mothman and i only watched like half of it, it i was hoping that it was going to be like hilarious like the bigfoot documentary was <laughs> It's well, not. No they way. take they take it very very seriously. I mean, they but take they, it seriously. In big, but... in big, well, yeah, they take it that, but they take it very mystery. seriously. In but a, it's hilarious. Well, not John way. Waters, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there was. They talk about back in World War II. There was like a munitions factory that was in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and they had something like a hundred silos full of just munitions that they were storing for the war, like manufacturing and storing there. And it's yep. like all vacant now, and they just call it the quote TNT area. And a lot of the Mothman sightings allegedly happened around that area. 
So that made me wonder, like, I don't know, did they have like some sort of chemical spill or something? And these people that are living there, are, like drinking fucked up water or like Probably. are being exposed to something. And that caused or, some burns on the eyes or the arms or, you know, I whatnot. Think, I think I figured it out. The Mothman is definitely a CIA plant to keep people away Nailed from, it. Uh, from munitions. Yeah, for sure. It's like a Scooby-Doo ploy put in by the CIA <laughs> to scare people away. And if you pull his mask off, it's J. Edgar Hoover under there. There you go. I'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for Richard Gere. I mean, you <laughs> honestly see these, you know, Netflix has a decent amount of, you know, uh, that, what, that nuclear plant that was on the island or Chernobyl. whatever. Oh, three Mile. No, 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 no um, Three, three mile, mile Island, yeah, yeah, and shit like that. I mean, honestly, and I'm not knocking any people or any reach or anything, but if you think about a chemical plant that exists on a river in – the middle of nowhere, West Virginia, where the locals are completely in charge of regulation and safety. I mean, is it that hard to think that some chemicals are in the water? <laughs> like, I mean, really, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like. This is a uh, gallon of PCP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I don't, there's nothing about, like Bob was saying, this is creepier on it. There is nothing that gives me any kind of hope or thought. I, you know, I'm the kind of person who kind of like wants to believe because it's cool, you know, or just because it's intriguing. You know, I want to believe that this house is haunted because maybe I could experience it. It's just like the stories are fun. There's nothing about mm -hmm. this story or this movie that gives me any kind of like oh maybe the mothman's gonna visit me or those those feelings that you get from some spooky horror that like maybe it could happen to you or maybe it has some kind of real impact like this just i don't know this movie was kind of boring <laughs> it just i felt like nothing happened and i didn't really feel anything about what happened i don't know they say if you put your dead wife's panties under your pillow the mothman visits you at night <laughs> Damn, that's, that's very up. specific <laughs> that's really fucked up <laughs> god damn the mothman uh, is a vicious cryptid you know <laughs> i'm a bit of a Bit of a cryptid nut. I got to put my wife's. I'm coming to dead, smell dead your wife's dead wife's, dead wife's man's man's God, that's, that's his deal. So yeah, I I, I want to get back. <laughs> Sounds to like, like a really... creeper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, well, man, that's really... that's what we're positing here for sure. Like that's the thing is like, what is his fucking intention? And not knowing his intention is not going to work well enough because there's not. It's not like a Michael Myers situation where not knowing what his goal is is beneficial to watching him kill people indiscriminately because we at least understand how a human being typically functions and how stabbings work. Like those things all follow with each yeah. other. The rock hard facts are that this guy's going around killing people. And what you speculate about is why that speculating why is not going to help if you're not able to even speculate what it looks like correctly or like have any kind of like any yeah. sort of like similarities there. Like it, it's it's not all of these things seem like separate incidents that people are bringing up and it's it just a dogged like reporter that got the big scoop on x y and z and is on cnn and shit from the washington post is completely and totally cowed by all of this he has no like he like it's one thing to be respectful of the person that you're interviewing it's another thing to then go home and be like wow that must be all true like the cop seems to think it's all oh, true. He's experiencing a lot, of, a lot of shit on his own, too, that he can't really explain. Yeah. So you got to give yourself over to it. Yeah, like if you don't, you're not going to have I a know. good time. You know? I, I just, I, did. I, like, I, did. I think there are <laughs> themes that even like there's just, I, there's these little things like, too, like, you, is he crazy? Is he not crazy? Is he dealing with his wife's grief and stuff like that? But even like the aspect of, okay, let's say this happened. I thought that they were going to play more with, you know, I kind of mentioned this, but okay, say that. This thing does call you and it gives you some warnings or whatever. He kind of like tries to warn the governor a little bit because he thinks something's mm -hmm. going to happen. But even playing with the idea of like, OK, like what if some monster told you that like 9-11 was going to happen and then like you couldn't prevent or you try like what would you do? And then would people ostracize you Ooh, calling a bomb? Like how would you stop people from going to work that day or getting on an airplane or so right. like even like the struggle of like dealing with the guilt of. 
I know what's going to happen. And this thing is kind of like torturing you in that way. Like, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, but no one's going to believe you or you can't do well, anything to e stop it. They don't even right. explore that aspect. Like, I just don't feel like anything is really explored with any kind of emotional depth to me they don't explore that or any of the consequences of him like for the most part none of the consequences of him saying this shit to the governor that turned out to not be true like yeah. uh, like they, they don't deal with any of that like if you like if you're in that situation and you're trying to warn like look don't go there there's something bad's gonna happen there i have a source on this like he did all that and that's fine and he's like is there a bomb threat and he's like just be like I've heard there might be a bomb threat. Just yeah. like go with it. Why not? Because the thing is, they're not going to believe the truth, and no, like yeah. you know that because you're already lying a little bit about it. So mm. we'll just keep lying. And but then if that if you succeed, you then have to answer the question: Who's your source? How, did How you do you know? know? Yeah. And like then, a boss I mean, man. I don't you know. say he, I got an anonymous call. Somebody heard I was staying in the hotel here. They knew I was reporter. They called. But like he doesn't, have even, caller like, he doesn't ID. even face scrutiny himself, yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah. thing that like mm -hmm. I feel like there's fertile ground there. Maybe it's just it's just scattershot's the right word for it. Like they're trying to hang too much on the same hook here. I think. <laughs> what did you guys think about the bridge collapse sequence towards the end? It was a good looking sequence. I thought it was yeah. a little confusing. I would say like it was tough to follow like where Connie was, for example, like in in space. Yeah, but chaotic isn't the worst thing in the world for a bridge collapse scene. So I also yeah. feel like this this movie's kind of well. I, I'll get to that. Never mind. I don't know. It's 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 kind of tough because you're in small town America, and and I know like what with if this was a real incident and like people died, that is like really sad and tragic. But the way that they shoot it is the bridge. It doesn't look like, for instance, like an saxonville like the dames point or something or what's that mm -hmm. big bridge the big steep bridge or whatever that yeah looks. that's it it's, dames point. okay dames point yeah doesn't look anything like that mm -hmm. and even to the point where like i know people trapped in their car truck get hit by the like swinging cables that break and stuff I, that's fine but it's not tall or big enough to keep this man from safely jumping into the water to then save Connie. So it's not like this big, like, wow, we're falling off a bridge. Like it's this, you know, in San Francisco or some shit, it's like, oh, I can safely jump in there and save somebody. I mean, but I don't you know. Have, it just I mean, feels kind of underwhelming. Things are in collapsing that way. on top of them. Sure. And also, yeah. the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse that happened like just a few months ago, yeah, it looks just Baltimore. like that bridge. Yeah. And like, yeah, that was pretty bleak, and that, that wasn't was, like a yeah. twenty car pileup. And this actually, like the thirty six dead on the bridge or whatever, I do believe, based on what I watched, that that is an understatement. Like that is, that is not true. Mm. It was more people. Yeah, like, oh, okay. it is. I think it's forty four. Was the, is the actual number? What a weird thing to change. Yeah, it's not even like they look changed that, <laughs> that much. But <laughs> yeah. just 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 a little bit it, weird. Okay, it was, they think uh, they forty forty six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But here's the problem with that. In reality, yeah, it was dangerous and people died. But to make this movie dramatic and to have some love interest, you have to be able to have somebody safely jump into the water to save yeah. somebody else. So then that I undercuts the danger. Of it. <laughs> it can, but also mm -hmm. like a collapsing bridge is not like getting into the water doesn't mean safety. Sure. In a collapsing sure, bridge sure. situation. Yeah. You're sure. at cars are falling in there. Sure. Like you're gonna get crushed. <laughs> I thought that sequence um, so. was mostly successful. It it did feel like maybe it took way too long for it to fully collapse. Like it felt like these people had a lot it of time, several times. to to like get off this bridge. Like Listen, there's just a lot of butt rock. That's a lot problem. of time. That kid <laughs> who problem. who like got his face smashed by a wire or whatever. That moment made me think of Final Destination in a big way. Yeah, the way yeah. That happened. Yeah, um, it was a CG moment too, and like that. Kind of yeah. like 2000 CG way. Yeah. In fact, that I didn't like the I, I I liked it conceptually, but like the CG of the chemical plant zoom out to the bridge, yeah, it didn't look too too. No, too that looked like me. dog shit, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bad. I'm not too critical of this era of CG, but that didn't look great. Yeah. Well, um, overall, they have like, to do a lot of things cheap. Like when the when the 
when you kind of see the monster at the beginning, I guess, uh, with the wife driving the car. I mean, you a don't really rough. see it. Yeah. But then also, too, like the but kid, it's snap. the kids yeah. in the back um, of the car, that definitely had like an unsolved mysteries feel to right. it. Like, it's just, it feels kind of chintzy. because what this is. I know. <laughs> I, mean, I know. But, it, but as they're a trying film, to make it work. It feels chintzy. Yeah. yeah. I wish they could have just focused in. Like, the thing is, like, if they had restrained the capabilities of the Mothman to some degree, into like and and like as as interesting as it is that those were true stories sprinkled throughout i think that that's a matter of us knowing that not a matter of the movie like like we the movie doesn't necessarily tell us that and if it did it would be just as dubious as the other changes they make so like why not go full bore into fiction and just say like no this is at least to some degree how the mothman works it plays at night only or it you know, travels through the through the electrical wires, and that's it. Or like, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah. It's trying to help humanity and test human. It's trying to test grieving humans into saving each other and breaking the cycle. Ah, oh, he saved the thirty seventh. That means the the Mothman goes away forever. Like, I think they're oh. kind of doing that, but they're not really saying it. Or I don't know. And also, by the way, the Mothman did not stop appearing in Point Pleasant at any point, is my understanding. So oh. this movie is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other major points, boys, before we rate this thing? Trophy. Yeah. I'll say let's, that word. Let's Very trophy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ray and DZ, this was your poll. Why don't you kick us off, man? Yeah. How do you feel out of five? Yeah. So uh, I, I've been, we've been talking shit about this movie quite a bit, but I do have a fondness for this movie. Like, I, like I have, I feel like the age I watched it at was kind of the perfect age. I want to say that, like, you know that was the time when my interest in uh, whatever interest I have in like conspiracy theories and all that sort of thing was at its burgeoning, you know, I was cutting my teeth on that stuff a little bit. And this movie speaks to that and that sort of thinking that X files in this oh, to it. And, you know, I, I think that since the, the way that the conspiracy theorist life cycle has gone over the last 20 or 30 years has soured me to the whole prospect in many ways. Because there's some dark shit happening in conspiracy circles these days, and um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I'm, I, I don't. It doesn't hold the same appeal for me now as it once did, but it does hold nostalgia. So I get some of that. I will say that, like, po- like act just straightforward positives. I think the performances in this are pretty good for the material they're working with. I don't think that you know just anybody could have sold some of what Will Patton was selling to even the degree that Bob you felt something not everybody could do that I think that comes down to the char- charisma of a particular actor Richard Gere does a good job of like kind of playing it straight and like making his moves as, as stupid as they sometimes were believable enough in the moment that I don't I, like it takes me a minute to question it sometimes um I think uh, Laura Linney is just a great actress in general I think that she gets the worst uh writing to try and elevate in this for herself they try but it's kind of like i don't know like all it is is like rejecting the bumpkin label and stuff like that and like that's that seems a little pandery to me i don't know like she doesn't get a lot but she like she's such a good actress that i still like these characters i like her i like these other characters i don't know man like there's there's some good stuff going on there the way it was edited dated but still like hits me just right i think for a lot of it um so some of it was in a bad way like we mentioned that cgi um but i don't know technical aspects i think are pretty good on this and it's nice to see a like a silly cryptid formed into a movie that is this budgeted and this spectacly from an era where it was still pretty cost prohibitive to do that side that that level of stuff or at least studios weren't throwing avengers money at shit um yeah, I don't know. I think all those negatives and all those positives together, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a, a nostalgia bump up to three point five. I think it's definitely better than average, certainly for its subcategory. Um, it's got some real problems, but that extra half point for the nostalgia, it 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 brings it up for me. Three and a half. Right on. Three and a half from Ray and DZ. Juice. How do you feel? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to focus more on the positives in my review. Cause I feel like I spent a lot of time 
kind of dog on this movie. What I will say, though, is the the kind of like nostalgia hit me, too. Um, even though I said it felt like it was like earlier. I mean, I remember things like X-Files and stuff like that. And so it does hit on that. And what I will say as a positive note for that as well is I do in the same way Randy was talking about watching this with his mom. I do feel like this is one of those bridge the gap type of things. People who are not particularly into horror, people who are too young for horror, but still want a little bit of spookiness in your life, something a little creepy. I think that this kind of hits that vibe um, to be able to kind of share an experience with your kids or someone younger, or you don't want to expose them to something that's too gory. Maybe or... on Christmas Eve, sit the family down. Maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably not. But... Um, <laughs> So I, I do think that that is a positive, something that Randy touched on too. I do like the aspect where they didn't talk down to these people as much as I would like for them to maybe explore the aspect that this isn't real or question that a little bit more. I do like the fact that they were like, you know, thinking like, oh, these are a bunch of fools or they're being tricked into this or they're playing some, pre like they were played like regular people in a, this regular small town and People are just living their lives and they're experiencing something. So I, I like that aspect of it, too. I do think the acting was good here. I do agree with Randy um, about the acting in general and like how it's written and like the love interest and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, I thought that um, everybody on screen was like fun to watch or endearing. Even that last phone call, I like the kind of messaging there where she calls and she's like, she's also not, I, I like the way she kind of convinced him of like, she's not saying it's not real. It's not, but she was saying like, even if it is, even if somebody calls you and it's your wife's voice on the line, it's not your wife, you know, mm -hmm. like your wife like is gone. Too. I liked mm -hmm. that moment. That was great. Um, so yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I kind of like the time aspect too. I like when he first showed up at Gordon's house or whatever, and they're talking about, oh, you've been here three nights or whatever, you know, like some of that stuff was the kind of like most effective, the, the phone calls didn't really do it for me, but stuff like that was more effective for me. Um, so yeah, I, I will say though, that this watch definitely draw like i'm not as endeared anymore I, I kept it in my mind i wouldn't say i was endeared before i had remember watching it and was like positive about it but this time honestly it was just kind of boring to me it was just boring i was surprised at how bored i was with it or surprised at how little meat there was on the bone actually i was really surprised by it and so it did like leave a negative aspect in my mind now so that's kind of Bad. So I think I'm going to put this one at a 2.5. I think the acting's good. I think some of the writing's good. Um, some of the scenes are a little spooky, but mostly kind of fell flat for me. 2.5. Bob, out of five, where are you going to put the moth man? I think I'm a, a little warmer on this than you guys. Um it did legitimately like creep me out. Like I watched it like in the middle of the day too. And it still kind of got to me somehow. Um, like I said, maybe that's some, some nostalgia lingering that helps it uh, still affect me in that way. Um, what, one of the things we, we didn't really get too much into is that the moment where he like shows uh, the, uh, the police officer, a picture of his wife and like, she, definitely like recognizes the face but doesn't want to totally confirm that's the lady that came into the station and he has this like breakdown i thought that was a really strong moment in the movie um got to me there as well uh yeah him him like losing time and not realizing where he is um is also super effective him somehow like basically just like teleporting with his car somehow in a way is like mm -hmm. kind of wild i dig that i thought Indrid's voice was actually kind of effective. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but I think for what it is, what it needs to be, I think it worked just fine. Um, uh -huh. I, it like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. aliens of four point five. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Room to grow. I, I, I like that this was based quote based in reality, uh, but it also at the same time. I feel that I feel this way with a lot of like true crime TV shows and documentaries and stuff. It feels like people like just cash literally cashing in on like a tragedy, like an actual tragedy. 
people died and this is like entertainment that's like you know it's fucking bullshit that there is no mothman it, there's it doesn't exist you know so there, there's like that weird tightrope that you're walking with this and i mean the dude wrote the book wait you know whenever i forget in the 60s i guess uh in the late 60s he wrote the book so i mean it's not like a new story it's been around for a while people have been cashing in on it for a while I so the i don't 70s, know yeah 70 yes yeah, yeah 75 i think yeah i think you're right so th- th- there's like a little bit of weirdness there for me too um that's fair i think I think we touched on just about everything else though. Um, yeah, the, the bridge scene I thought looked good, but it felt like it took 15 minutes for this bridge to collapse. You know, like people had too much time, I don't, but I thought it's it was the shot only well. rock hard incident that they had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, the acting elevates a lot of it. Will Will Patton like adds a full star to my I rating. I want to see more like of that man. Full star for Will Patton in this. Um, I, it's fun. Funnily enough, that, like I feel like I was mostly talking positively about this movie, and Randy, you were mostly talking negative. But I'm gonna give it a three and a half. Like that's kind of what yeah. I was planning on the whole time. Um, so two sides of the the same coin there. Um, so three point five so. from me, and that's gonna put our aggregate at a three point two for the mock right. So let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten Tomatoes segment and see what the critics and users have to say about the Mothman prophecies. All right, you fools, here comes the Mothman Prophecies on RottenTomatoes.com. I'm going to have these gentlemen guess, within the best of their abilities, what the aggregate of positive scores is going to be on Rotten Tomatoes. That's going to be for critics and users, starting with the critics. Um, We'll start with Justin today with our critical score. That's going to be 142 reviews. Um, What percentage of those 142 reviews, Justin? would you say are positive reviews? I don't know. I mean, like we all, you know, mostly talked about this being a positive kind of experience. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like whenever I hear people talk about this, it's generally in positive light. And since it came out so long ago, I think some of the negatives that I personally had a problem with this time are going to be looked more favorably up. Pawn, like I think people are gonna I don't know that's not gonna bother people as much and like I said this is kind of one of those like bridge movies where not necessarily horror fan you know like poor drama choice fan. of words huh yeah. poor choice of words which one the bridge movie oh no, okay. it's definitely a bridge move <laughs> but yeah so um I think I don't know I'll go kind of we rated it 64 percent I think I'll say like 75. 75. All right. Bob, what about you? Where are you going with this one? Critics. Critics is a tough one on this because it is, it's, you know, it's about a cryptid. It's kind of, it's goofy. It's silly. It's, but it's got like some money here and it's got some like very impressive acting power behind it too. So, like, I don't know. Um, I'll be, I'll continue to be uh, on the higher side of things. Um How and high. I'll take the over, I guess. With I don't know, man. Yeah, that sounds kind of crazy. I'll just I'll take a seventy-eight, I guess, a little bit higher. Okay, seventy-eight. All right. Well, slightly an interesting number choice, but all right. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see what. How far off are we? We are about twenty-three percentage points off. So oh, going to take this one. Shit. Correct answer is fifty-two <laughs> percent. It's like yeah. it can't be hundred and one percent. Quick <laughs> math. You can't. You can't do it. So Whoa. you're going to take this one. You are so so close. We just broke our Hal Skeet and Yeet streak, though. So that's a little unfortunate. The but Skeet and Yeet streak. Fuck. I'll, I'll still take my Hell Yeet, but wow, Skeet that's a lot lower than I thought it'd be. Bob hasn't guessed yet. Bob, Bob has like we don't know what. Well. The- Oh, it has we to could go still have order? a skinny, but we yeah, have been hitting it in the that exact order. order. Yeah, is what I we've see. been doing. Well, yeah. well we could right, still well, get a skinny. Sorry to that's ruin fine. the perfect that's game. That's fine. All right, Bob. Ski. But no, up. yeah, that's a lot lower than I thought it would be. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I kind of agree. Like, I don't know. I've, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it once we get through the audience okay. scores. So there are 50,000 plus audience Fuck. ratings on this one. That's wow. quite a bit. Bob, I'm going to start with you now. Out of those 50,000 plus ratings, what percentage would you say are positive? Definitely higher than the critics on this. I feel, I feel that that's a safe bet. Um, how high? Not, not crazy. Um, cause it's still a weird movie. 
I'll take the I'm gonna roll with a comedy number. Sixty nine, please. Oh, 69. 69, dudes! We're in our 30s, right? Okay, just checking. Um, Juice, how about you? Two of us are. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I don't... Wow, that I don't know. That critic score is honestly kind of surprising. And making me... And with the high number of... I don't know. With a high number of... 69 that's a i feel like it's gonna be on that line i might take the under on this one um i think it's maybe sitting around a 60 60 all right well significantly closer on this particular one there's only four percentage points of gap between one of you and the correct answer and that person is going to be Soju again. We've definitely broken the streak now. Oh, it is a 56%. Damn. 56%. Damn. That's pretty surprising. This is, it is. These are rotten maters across I the board. Thought, yeah, I just have always heard positive things about this movie. But maybe. Same. Yeah. I think that the only people talking about it are the ones that remember it fondly. And that's my yeah. only theory to that yeah. to this. Because I've seen so many people Damn. say, like, the creepiest movie nobody knows about or talks about or whatever. Yeah. And people make fucking clickbait hay out of this all the yeah. time. The clickbaitiest clickbait you so ever much click. hay. So, uh, hey. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Even, the like, in the say, Slack, mm-hmm. when people were talking about this movie, they said, hell yeet. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> they all yeet and yeet. Mm. My favorite <laughs> kids show, Yeet mm. and Yeet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the critics' consensus reads as follows. A creepy thriller that poses more questions than it answers. I don't think that's incorrect. Mothman is bridging into theaters. <laughs> Mothman is attracted to the light of the theater? I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> Mothman is swarming the neons of your local theater. Our our boy Chris Stuckman calls it one of the creepiest movies ever made. So you know, oh, we're wrong. Well. He would. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a give that guy a shit. I know. <laughs> that guy just this so fucking much guy. Reason. Well, anyway, he doesn't have great opinions. <laughs> he has very weak. He has very weak opinions, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't. Actually well, that's a very that weak opinion. Dude. This is not. The, this is not the dragging him. our our I colleagues know. in horror review uh, section of the show. <laughs> Um, I'm not into that. Let's not start internet drama. All right. Stuckman's all right with me. Uh, here's some negative reviews. Psychological Grow thriller pair, may Stuckman. deeply upset some kids. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that's from Common Sense Media, so I think that's a probably maybe like a, a Christian rag or something. I'm not sure. A Christian rag. Juice man. demanding someone just be more hardline on their reviews is very funny. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that quite a bit. I don't. You I can't count how many times we said I don't know during just this review. <laughs> I don't know. No, be uh, firm, damn you. <laughs> I can see the hate in your eyes, Stuckman. Spill it, boy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're going to get stuck on this. Here's another negative review. <laughs> the Mothman Prophecies is the kind of solemn, credulous junk that Men in Black so cleverly sent up. So it's just Men in Black was making 97. fun of it from taking Mothman yeah. seriously. I will say this. The Men in Black are apparently deeply involved with Mothman lore. They just didn't cover it here. And it's not like the Men in Black as in the Will Smith movie yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, It's like creepy zombie dudes in fedoras that go around telling people not to write about the Mothman anymore. Yeah. That's what they say. That's Don't write say. about the Mothman anymore, bitch. That's, that's a good Halloween costume. Mothman. Yeah, sure. Dude, I what mean, if you got I'm visited in by some no, guy not that one. dressed in black who told you not to write about the Mothman anymore? Would Don't you write stop? about Mothman. <laughs> Ask me what not to write about. Dang First thing I do lapel. is fucking call you guys and be like, dude, like, <laughs> Some yeah. shit's going down, man. Right about the moth, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one last negative review, and then we'll call it quits. There are certainly strong moments and efficient set pieces here too, but for all the claims that the film adapt that the film adapted by a ni- from a 1975 book by John Keel is based on real events, Pellington fails to sustain credibility, and I think that's actually accurate. Not funny, just accurate. Mm. <laughs> 
Yeah. Mothman yeah. is swarming into theaters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Let's let's get our asses into gear and maybe do. Is there any trivia left, or are we working yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah, I got some more okay. trivia. Let's do it. It's totally time for trivia. All right, there, boys. So Lakeshore Entertainment apparently cut two million dollars off the budget just a few days before shooting was to begin. Bummer. I guess. Um, so. Out of how much of a budget did it, does it say that? No, I didn't look up the overall budget actually. Uh, look at that. Thank you, thank you for picking up my slack. Apparently, that's something that the director Mark Pellington also uh, dealt with with uh, uh, when he directed Arlington Road from 1999. Not a movie I've seen, mm -hmm. um, so I, his shit's just kind of plagued with last second budget cuts. Apparently, it's a 32 million dollar budget. I mean, that's not nothing by any means, by any yeah, stretch. That's... But I mean, yeah, two million dollars off the top of that is not. Not, yeah, not cataclysmic. He, he probably lost a couple days or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the name of the expert on paranormal activity is Leak in the movie, and which that's just a reverse spelling of the dude that wrote the book in '75, oh, John yeah. A. Keel. Um, well. in his, uh, I know, get out of town. In his 1970 book Operation Trojan Horse, as well as the 1975 book The Mothman Prophecies. John Keel, uh, it links the Silver Bridge collapse to the alleged sightings of the Mothman. So I guess he's he's the guy that really kind of solidified those two things being connected. Oh boy. Yeah, I think so. I, and like, oh I think that boy. if I remember what I watched well enough, he like got really deep into this, and the townspeople were saying he was getting pretty paranoid, and he started like he thought that all of the power in the country or something was going to go out at some point, and so he started mm -hmm. like doomsday prepping basically. Oh, and boy. then when the bridge collapsed, he's like, oh, no, that's what the incident was, actually. So it how can, like people that's my trying of to that. take advantage <laughs> of some tragedy. It's like every yeah. cult that's ever been like, oh, the uh, world's going to end on this day. And then it doesn't. And we're like, oh, well, actually, we, we read this wrong. Or like, you know, it's, yeah, here's it's what in it's six really months. Happen. Just keep giving oh, us yeah. money. Keep being scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys weren't believing hard enough. So they forestalled the Armageddon. For shame. End of days is coming. It's definitely coming. Time to have sex before the world ends. You know, you got to do it now. Bang it out. <laughs> married, switch seats. married, not married, whatever. Do it. What? Married, uh, not for... married. <laughs> <laughs> Puritan Bob over here. <laughs> but, but, hey, hey, I'm, I wasn't one raised. It doesn't matter. Before. In the dark. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> There's no wedding uh, rings in the dark, boys. For, <laughs> yes, there are. They do exist. <laughs> object permanence is bad, but I, my libido is good. <laughs> Don't worry about what's under that pillow. It's definitely not my dead wife's panties, I promise. Jesus Christ. For the, for the, for the, call Why do you think I'm here, Bob? They call me Moth Man so too. <laughs> I am the queen. I'm here to toss that salad in the dark. <laughs> Jesus Hope God. that's not a wedding ring, I feel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no wedding rings in the dark, just salad tossing. <laughs> I'm the moth man. Don't um, touch that dial. Sounds, you you got, hear this. sounds like a wild night. <laughs> you got chapstick in your hand. I know it. Dude, um, the product placement in this was unreal, by the way. Just the, dude, like chapstick. the loving <laughs> shot of the Washington Post sign and the chapstick. Like the Mothman respects brand names. He doesn't go for generic. <laughs> oh, my Lord. The Mothman. For the bridge collapse sequence took three months to fabricate every piece of the bridge from scratch. They estimated about 20,000 individual pieces of steel went into the construction. And, yeah. uh, it, it they created a one sixth scale uh, model suspension bridge to support all the model vehicles, and ultimate ultimately collapsed into uh, water. So like all that shit was built out and real, and I, I mean it looked awesome. good. It looked it looked pretty good. I thought. I think that's like I just missed the days where that was like yeah. like it sells differently. It just does. Yeah. Like if they had done that all in the same janky ass CG that they did that that pan out shot in, it yeah. would have blown ass. Thank would. God they didn't. Yeah, just like the Mothman. Yeah. Um, like the last, I got three more points. This is all like uh, real life 
stuff about uh point point pleasant uh so on on december 15 uh, december 15th 1967 the silver bridge collapsed amid some heavy rush hour traffic that did result in 46 folks dying uh, two of them were never found uh, an investigation of the wreckage soon pointed to the failure of a single eye bar in one of the suspension chains of the pro- which which was the primary cause of the bridge failing a finding noted oh, yeah. Do you mean they they actually had a, a reason that it collapsed, unlike what the movie said? Yeah, yeah, they pinpointed what? it very, very clearly. Um, a finding noted in a preliminary report released within 10 months of the collapse, um, but then uh, afterwards to, to further explain why the I-bar, I-bar failed, uh, which was a, a failure triggered by a flaw of just 0.1 inches uh, deep. It was, oh, it was a, a, a fracture that was 0.1 inches deep in one of these eye bars. Oh my God. And then at the end it said, but also the Mothman did it though. But <laughs> Yeah. So that, uh, Don't something write about that the small. The Mothman designed this bridge. <laughs> the uh, But because of this collapse, apparently it led to very significant changes in the way bridges in the U.S. are inspected and maintained. So good. Yeah. Hey, something good. To come out of something it. good isn't that crazy though the smallest smallest crack man. that shit like blows my mind i you yeah gotta, <laughs> you really gotta get your know your shit to make a good bridge i don't I know how anything can be so precise though to be honest yeah how? it really I like know. i'm dumb i'm a makes, dumb guy i don't know makes no. you question like these fucking bridges i drive over I'm bridges not a literally every engineer. day yeah yeah like mm. fucking you knock on wood dude so i i did not confirm this i i one of my coworkers telling me this i don't know the the bridges in town have they've been there for decades and decades and decades and you know the river runs constantly apparently it washed away a lot of the the sediment that the bridges are literally sitting on so like oh. they're sort of like s- stabilized by its own weight leaning into itself largely so like i'm i'm sure there's a certain amount of maintenance required but like the shit that they were built on is largely washed away over time. Dude, which... I've mentioned this a Ooh. lot. One of the consistent nightmares I've always had throughout my whole life, it, like as far as I can remember, is being on what seems like the Dames Point Bridge and it yeah. collapsing. So yeah. I'm not going to drive terrible. over that anymore <laughs> when I come to Jacksonville. <laughs> Damn. Take a long way around. <laughs> uh, yeah, it uh, makes your butt my ass. I hate driving over that bridge. I really do. Yeah, that makes sense. The funnest. It's very it's steep. A, it's a, it's a it's a big fucker. Yeah. I can't it's imagine driving over thing on a motorcycle. No. When I'm in my car, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> like driving into the fucking like a, sky. It's like about a forty-five degree angle for. I mean, it's high. Yeah. As, I mean, cruise ships go under. Yeah, it has to be it's high enough big, for yeah. cruise ships to go under. Yeah. yeah, and it's so fucking steep, dude. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Call in with your bridge nightmares. Like yeah. you, that's like a common nightmare folks have. I you think know? so. Like, yeah, that'd yeah. be a good call in. Yeah, hit us up. I, yeah, I got a, a couple more quick ones, real quick. So Point Pleasant held its first annual Mothman Festival in 2002. The Mothman Festival began after brainstorming creative ways to attract visitors to Point Pleasant. Wow, doesn't that Around sound here, kind that of means familiar? Big money. Color me shocked, boys. I know. Uh, the, wow. Group or- organizing the event shows the Mothman to be the center of the festival due to its uniqueness and as a way to celebrate its local legacy in the town. According to the event organizer Jeff Wamsley, the average attendance for the Mothman Festival is about ten to 12,000 folks a year. And they also constructed a 12-foot tall metallic statue of the creature um, yeah, by created by Bob Roach, and it was unveiled in 2003. There's also a Mothman Museum and Research Center in town it was open in 2005 uh the festival apparently is held on the third weekend of every september they have guest speakers vendors exhibits and also a pancake eating contest for some hell reason. hell yeah I don't... we must honor <laughs> that the sounds Mothman. more appealing than <laughs> how much do you think the annual annual salary for a uh, the Mothman... anal salary <laughs> the Mothman researcher the Mothman. is what do you think Oh, and research is... facility. <laughs> Dude, I mean, this is like roadside do? attraction I research shit. Mop, man. <laughs> it's roadside attraction <laughs> shit, and I like it. I, I'm good for them, honestly. I, I'm like, embrace something that's unique unique to your yeah. town. Go for it. I don't have any problem with it at all. I'm what all I'm, for I'm embracing something that's every unique town to your in America town. Has a Bigfoot festival. Yeah, that's the thing. 
don't manufacture <laughs> something to be unique for your town. Well, it's un- it's they uniquely had that history that and they started embracing yeah. it in two th- 2002. Like yeah. that works for me fine. Like people after see- the movie came out, that this movie came out in 2002. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, they got a boost in popularity. Like, hey, we can capitalize yeah. on this. Great. And like Cash people in. there care enough about it to go for it. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. yeah. I get... But that's all the trivia. I think it could be fun. I think it's all like lighthearted fun for the most part with the except yeah. the, the odd goofball in the mix. That would be my assumption. <laughs> uh, You know, this might be the perfect time to transition to our cooter of the week. It might be. But is it? Juice, what is a cooter and why do we hunt them? Hey! Cooter's character type <laughs> and a straight chill and exclusive. Cooter must hit three of these five points to be considered a cooter. Cooter has to hit, wait, three of these five points because we want the cooter with the most <laughs> points. <laughs> oh my God. Five points of cooterdom are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall looking attire, and overall patheticness. Oh, boys. The autopilot uh, failed. You, I huh? know it did. It did. <laughs> it took a dip there. Um, <laughs> but we stabilized. We stabilized. <laughs> Boys, do we have a cooter in this film? My boy, cold. Mr. Freeze. My boy, injured cold. Yeah. Ingrid um, Cold calling here. I, guess I think that, you could say so in the In the film, the guy who does the voice for him is also the bartender. Apparently, I looked this up. His name is oh. Mark Pellington. He was also the... okay. He's the director too. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. Okay, well, I was never mind. Say, that sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so wait, who are we going with, Mister Freeze? Yeah, injured, cold, manipulative, okay. check for sure. Yeah, um, um, unknowable. <laughs> is that a is that a point? Looking um... at tire fedora. Never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, just um, uh, one per crew. One, um, yeah, that, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Some people pull it off well. But some people can. Mister yeah. Freeze. I don't know. Um, maybe in the fifties. Maybe. Um, um, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Think... Yeah, I don't know if he's pathetic if we or had sexually any clue. deviant. Or and they smug. don't try to throw anybody else under the bus in this movie. Everybody's no. like really supportive. And this movie mm-hmm. could have really used a uh, lady from the cafe and birds, like that yeah. sort of person. Was like, this is bullshit. Like, I I know my stuff. I'm from the town, so I'm, it's not a bumpkin thing. It's not like you know. Or to like post some kind criticism. of doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah. In this movie. Bring his like little mm-hmm. buddy from the Washington Post down and have him. Yeah. Like, dude, you're off your rocker, bud. I'm your little buddy, and you're I'm telling your little lies. buddy. And I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm your little buddy. Listen to your little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I brought my little buddy here. <laughs> he says this is all bupkis. What do you guys think? Uh, you gonna tell yeah. my little buddy what's what? You gotta pass a little buddy test. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh yeah there's nobody to it there's no kind of sexual deviance in this movie there's no yeah. kind of there's really no like strong negativity well, in I this guess film depends on how strongly you feel about not making out with your wife on the floor of a closet in your uh real <laughs> game. Dude, that's what what a <laughs> I, choice like they they were about to just fuck like you don't view a house that long i, I mean the, you know i thought the realtor left he was just in the next yeah. room and then he comes in he's like, waiting uh, in the well, you gotta make or something yeah, and they're they're just like he's like, well, you got to make an offer, and he's like, we'll take it, and then he closes the door up. That's a G moment. I appreciate they, that last bit. Yeah, Good he for closed him. the door. This is now Did mine. They so actually? <laughs> no, I guess they didn't fuck because they they're like speeding home to fuck. But he closed the yeah. door. They still they still get a little uh they you know, PG thirteen action. Yeah, maybe I got a little dick tip in there for a minute. Just just the tip, yeah. just to like you know really really edge you yourself gotta, hard. Just, it's and like then you, just it's like. It's like breaking a, a a champagne glass on the hull of your new boat. You know, it's just good luck. You got to break it in. Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And and then you take those panties and you put them under your pillow and you get haunted and you lose your job and a bridge yeah. collapses. And... Yep. Now that's a movie worth seeing. Yeah, there I'd watch that movie. <laughs> there's no cooter, I don't think. Like, no, yeah. I don't no, think, I think we're cooter. we're spinning wheels here pretty hard. Yeah. 
So right. yeah, coot- cooter free since 2002. There you go. All right. Mothman prophecy. Boys, let's finally talk about what we've been watching these past two, three weeks, whatever it's been. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, gang. What you been watching? Randy, kick us off, man. What you been watching? Sure. I got a little backup here. Um, I've watched the first episode and not more yet, although I'm interested to continue, uh, of a documentary series called Stax, Soulville, USA, about the Memphis recording studio Stax that uh, recorded a fuck ton of great artists um, back in the day. It's very interesting. Um, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet with it a little bit. It's a little bit of a passive watch, but I enjoy it so far. Um, I watched Stop Motion, the new film, horror film about a stop motion animator who has mental things happening to her. And um, yeah, I have some opinions on that that I might reserve for a bonus episode. I'm still still Ooh. kicking that one around. Nice. Yeah. I watched, uh, rewatched rather, a documentary that I brought up before I feel like I had to have called Three Identical Strangers about three uh, dudes who were adopted and... Um, later found out that they had twin and then triplet brothers and then how their lives uh, went from there. Uh, and apparently it was all due to uh, an undisclosed um, medical experiment on seeing how children raised in different families were, come out and it fucked up a bunch of people and it's really shitty. That's um, insane, dude. It's very fucking insane. Um, rewatch that thing you do. Uh, it was great. It's a great movie. Classic. No notes classic um yeah uh i have watched a couple of recaps of the previous seasons of the boys and the previous season of severance because those uh so shows are coming out with new episodes um and i'm excited about both of those and then last but not least not a watch not really any of those things but it is something that i took a lot of time to do yesterday which was ride the fuck out of every roller coaster at bush gardens williamsburg we rode all 10 coasters more than once damn um, that's a lot and a couple other things yeah holy shit the lines there having been put through the fucking metal like the the hard temp fucking line centric world of disney parks for so many years and universal parks it was a breeze dude like i don't that's i've awesome. never seen a i've never seen a, a, a theme park in the summer have lines that are consistently less than 15 minutes nice. wherever you go that's dope it was man. great yeah to be uh, able to great. hit all t- or like all the coasters just once is yeah i know I, mean, I didn't it. hit every one of them twice i hit a few of them twice yeah, but yeah, i hit yeah. all 10 of them and yeah damn extra. that's a lot dude and i we, think i'd we, lose my lunch if i hit like also too yeah double digits oh, we, had to, we even paced it a little bit 10 <laughs> yeah. is intense yeah that's a lot yeah. there was only one that gave me any sort of like it's the first time i've ever gotten like a little bit of like uneasy stomach was on apollo's chariot just because it's so up and down mm. but people love that one their new one is called pantheon and you go backwards multiple times it's great it's fucking great you get launched four times Damn, four fucking dude. times Damn. It rules. cool that's badass yeah that's it for my watch you've been watching. Uh Juice, how about you? What you been watching? Um, not too much, even with the backup. I the really the only thing I saw was um that new Furiosa movie in theaters. Mm-hmm. And um it's no Fury Road. It's um kind of feels like a watered down Fury Road. There's still some stuff there. There's some good stuff there, but I don't, it's just hard to follow that up. I don't know. That's just such a good movie. It's, you know, it was fun enough to like to see it. I'm glad I got to see it in theaters. It's one of those movies you definitely, you know, it's good to see it in theaters, but it's like, you know, we need to give, I don't know. Something about some of those characters that were so intriguing for the beginning was that it was just so random and you don't want a lot of backstory and information about them. So even when they were like, yeah, we're going to go back and like redo it, I was like, really? But, is okay unnecessary but okay um really that's it that's all i've been watching i am just too damn busy these days bob what you been watching yeah i watched a few things so i'd never seen inside out before the sequels coming out or just yeah, came out yeah. or something solid pixar movie i, I yeah, enjoyed it cute. quite a bit it's cute yeah it's, it's dealing with has like... a weepy moment yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, it got it. It made me a little misty at the end for sure. It it definitely got me, but it was like, you know, 
te- teaching kids a, a lot of like really important lessons about emotions, dealing with emotions, like choosing how you react to things, having, you know, dealing with complex emotions and like, yeah. you know, not, not running from sadness and embracing it and it being important and stuff. It's just like a, a really cool movie. I don't know. I, I really liked it a lot and it made me kind of want to watch the sequel. There's a lot of like great voice actors in it too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like yeah, the the whole cast is solid. So yeah, I I liked it more than I thought I would actually. So watch Inside Out if you haven't seen that. Recommend. Um, I revisited The Goonies. Been years since I'd seen oh, The Goonies, wow. mm-hmm. and that one in in my mind has always been like Stone Cold classic, like eighties gym or whatever. But I don't know, man. Some of the stuff maybe just didn't hit me quite right this time. I don't. know. It felt like maybe a kind of kind of stale kind of. Really. Mm-hmm. Kind of like it. I've, I don't know. Some it's of the got a little just... bit of autumn vibes. Maybe it was off your calendar, Bob. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it reminds me of well, summer. I guess honestly. it is end of summer. It's more end of summer movie, I think, than autum. Time. I think yeah. there's like touches of autumn, but I could it's, be wrong. It's, it's very gloomy. This, yeah. it's a very gloomy Rain. situation. Well, because yeah. it's Pacific Northwest. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to. I, you know, uh, and they're in caves, like half the movie. So like, yeah, I don't know what, right. What, what, yeah, and then I don't it's know. like Some a water stuff, ride, half of it. So. It is, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of mind blowing that there isn't a Goonies ride at every park everywhere. But yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff didn't really age well, man. There's some, there's some like I don't know, it's kind of sketchy stuff in there. But all right, woke Bob. It was okay. <laughs> it was okay. Goonies woke. <laughs> That's click what the thumbnail says the clickiest oh, bait you ever clicked. It's no, fine. I, I mean. I, it's my favorite thing to watch. Like I, I love that movie, but I watched that movie probably like six dozen times before I turned twelve years old. Like I've seen it so many times. Yeah. It's it's just part of my DNA. I can't besmirch it. But I've heard other people like your mileage varies depending on on how you how much you've seen it or uh, other factors. I will say this: when I lived in Astoria, it was fucking awesome as shit to just like walk down the street and just be at a filming location. It was really fun. Yeah, um, the setting is beautiful. Uh, it's so it's beautiful. great. That's great. Yeah. It's one of my favorite places I've ever stayed for a, a significant amount of time, for sure. Yeah. The Goonies, it's okay. I don't know. Um, I also got to watch Scream on the big screen for the first time. Um, Sunray in their final weeks of being open, they're just playing a lot of like requested movies. Mm-hmm. And um, I requested like a dozen. This was on my list. Um, <laughs> I'm sure other folks also requested it, but it was sold out. On a Tuesday night, completely sold out. The crowd was having a great time, you know, oohing and on and laughing and, you know, responding to crazy shit happening. And there were like certain lines that just like really stick out in a way, like when you're watching it in a theater, like a packed crowd, that the things that people react to are not the same things that you might react to on your couch with like one or two other people. Just like some of the, some of the, some of the jokes hit different. Some of the lines carry more weight. It was just a cool way to experience a movie I've seen countless times. And it was great. I I loved it. I missed the title of the movie. What is, what movie was it? Scream. Scream. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Great flick. Hey, still really, really good. So, that was that was Four a fun and experience. Stars. That was the first movie you watched in your new house, right? Damn, you bet. I know it was. Yeah. Name, my guy. It was. Yeah. Uh, I don't get tired of it. Um, I also I revisited Spider Man uh, No Way Home, and I hadn't seen mm. that since it was in theaters, and that still holds up pretty dang good. I think that's oh. definitely one of my favorite Marvel movies. Uh, it has stakes and like weight and a lot of you know characters that you've seen from other movies and. I don't know. A lot of fun action sequences. It's, it's, I liked it overall. Definitely one of the better ones that that we've seen since we've been revisiting some of those. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally, the last thing I did was I uh, saw the Menzingers, a band called the Menzingers. This is not a movie. Uh, play live in nice. Orlando this weekend uh, for the birthday festivities, and they never disappoint. They're great. They're a great band. They kill it. They <laughs> something that. Alice pointed this out to me. Uh, one of the front men, I, I don't remember their names, but the dude um, that's like a shorter and has like the male bald pattern or what it, baldness pattern or whatever. Yeah. He looks so much like Paul Giamatti. It's, I can't unsee it now. He's, uh, when they were playing too, they had, he had the, like this um, like satin button up shirt with a couple buttons undone and like a gold chain. And he's got the Paul Giamatti like hair and he had some glasses. He just looks so much fucking like Paul Giamatti. It was, I don't know, added to my enjoyment. Um, good band. <laughs> That's Check a them out. Fucking incredible band. Yeah. Good shit. That's it. That's what I've been watching. That's what I've been doing. Nice. Well, there you go there. 
There uh, you go. There. We do not have any voicemails this week because nobody loves us. Nobody loves us this week. <laughs> What's so funny about that, Bob? You think it's funny that nobody calls us? <laughs> Laughing anymore? at your own jokes. <laughs> I love that that sound was created by a human being, and uh, <laughs> now it's going to be a bum forever. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, sex symbol Donald Sutherland. Yeah. Oh, 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 uh, yeah, no vo- no voicemails this week. But if you guys are listening and would like to call and leave a voicemail for next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. Um, again, I think, you know, if you have a recurring nightmare or have had a nightmare about, you know, a bridge, falling off a bridge, a bridge collapsing, whatever, call in. Tell us your, your nightmare stories. Yeah. Um, any other uh, prompts? Yeah. I do have a prompt. Like, yeah. I really want, like, if, if anybody here took took any sort of offense to us, like, shitting on the idea that the Mothman's real or any of that shit, call in, man. Tell us your stories. Convince us. Mm-hmm. Have you ever Sell had, a, yeah, like, a cryptid experience? Maybe that was our problem last week. I don't know. but um... I think it was, but I really still want it. Or I even, yeah. if they have got you them. felt like you ever, like, sometimes my dad will say this, too, and he is not, like, a, a technical, like, crypto believer, but he, um sometimes, like, he say, like, he'll dream something and it'll happen. Um, have, mm. Do you ever have any, like, premonition experiences of something? I know everything! Yeah, is it a blessing? Is it a curse? Let us know. Yeah. I think I mentioned on last week's show that I did years ago have a conversation with someone and i can't remember who it was they had like a legitimate mothman like story and i I don't even remember the details of it but it was Hmm. it was interesting i don't know they were like somewhat skeptical about it too it wasn't like i 100 know the mothman is real but it's like this crazy thing happened man it's it was weird Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, i mean shit shit happens that you can't necessarily explain and it's fascinating to talk about I have a mutual friend of all of ours who I won't blow up his spot, but like who told me some spooky stuff growing up that happened to him or was passed on from family to him or something like Mm. that. And, you know, spooky stuff, stuff I don't ultimately believe, but you know, I want to hear about it. Oh, I want to hear about it. Richard, right? Richard Jones. He lives yeah. off of uh, Dick, Bay Meadows. Dick Jones. And, no, just... yeah. <laughs> he lives off, uh... Look him up in the phone book. Give him a call. <laughs> he's married he's... now. He's got a couple kids, right? Um, Joseph and... <laughs> where, where is this going now? I'm, not, I'm concerned about the involvement of children in this fantasy. Uh, he lives on 69 Soju Lane, I think. Oh. <laughs> I don't like the look of it. All right. I... Yep. Yeah. Call in 904-638-3231. There, yeah. Nightmares. Cryptids. Call in. <laughs> I know you're listening. I know you got them. I know you got them. All Hit right. us up. That, that's going to do it for us this week. Next week, we're going to be back with a brand new show per usual. Per, per, per usual. Per usable. Words. Uh, yes. Words. They're hard. What do they do? I don't know. Uh, we're talking about the final you pick of the second quarter of the year. This one was chosen by your boy Matt S. Whoa. The oh, movie shit. is The Witches from 1990. Nice. Ooh. All right. It's good. One. It. Yeah. Another Check out The Witches. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this one's like everywhere, like super easy to stream, rent, is it? buy on a Blu ray, mm-hmm. buy on a DVD. I think, yeah, I think it's it's pretty. Pretty accessible. So check out The Witches from 1990. Get ready for next week's show. Until then, you can find us on all the social media outlets. Just search Straight Chilling Podcast. We'll pop right up. If you want to join in the daily Slack channel conversations, hit us up on one of those social media outlets. Let us know, and I'll send you a link so you can do so. And until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. (laughs) 